In our previous video on training to failure, we determined that it's not necessary to go to failure all the time. In fact, when you look in detail at most meta-analyses on training to failure and its relationship to hypertrophy, you'll see that their findings are mostly in favor of doing more sets in close proximity to failure. Specifically, in this meta-analysis, they state that as long as training is carried to a point of significant fatigue, increases in muscle activation and mass will be similar to those of training performed to failure. This is because you want to avoid the accumulation of unnecessary fatigue as well as unwanted muscle damage as these can essentially decrease your net hypertrophy gains. The problem, however, is that you can't accurately measure your proximity to failure if you don't even know where true failure occurs. Thus, we first need to define what true failure is. Here, we'll define true failure as the point where you cannot complete another repetition in the pre-established range of motion without form breakdown. But take note that reaching true failure is not as straightforward as it seems. As a matter of fact, what you think the threshold of failure is for you right now might actually be far from it. According to this 2022 study, most lifters grossly underestimate the number of repetitions they can do in a set with any given weight by as much as 30%. That's around 5 to 10 repetitions short of failure. So, to make sure that you're not leaving all of those gains on the table, let's next establish what training close to failure is, specifically what it feels like. When assessing your proximity to failure, it doesn't really matter if you use reps in reserve or rate of perceived exertion. What really matters is that you know what getting close to failure looks and feels like. Thus, an objective standard many use to know when the set is already in the near failure range is when rep speed starts to involuntarily slow down. In other words, when you're grinding out reps and no matter how much force you apply, the weight is hard to move. And according to the literature, this involuntary slowing of rep speed correlates with a closer proximity to failure. Basically, the slower reps get, the closer you are to true failure. Additionally, studies show that higher rates of velocity loss correspond to higher rates of muscle growth. So, while you may be pushing yourself hard in the gym, ensuring you're stopping your sets just shy of true failure could be the difference between packing on new muscle mass and completely wasting your time in the gym. And while having a target rep range can be helpful, stopping a set once you've reached the prescribed number of reps rather than pushing closer to true failure is a surefire way to go weeks, months, or even years without visual progress. That's why I recommend that during your next training session, you ditch the rep ranges and focus solely on pushing your sets closer to true failure. In most cases, you'll find that you're able to perform far more reps than you otherwise would have by aiming for a target rep range. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you want to keep optimizing your training, watch our video on progressive overload. There, you'll learn the best way to progressively overload your training so that you can keep getting bigger and stronger while avoiding plateaus. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.